Señor es You give me life and I can't explain just how How much you mean to me now But you have saved me, Lord I give all that I am to you That every day I can Be a light that shines your name Every day, Lord, I learn to stand upon your word And I pray that I, that I might come to know you more That you would guide me in every single step I take that Every day I can be a light unto the world Every day, it's you I live for Every day, I follow after you Every day, I walk with you my Lord Every day, Lord, I, I learn to stand up on your word And I pray that I, that I might come to know you more That you would guide me in every single step I take now Every day I can be a light of, Come on, sing it! Every day it's you I live for Every day I follow after you Every day I walk with you, my Lord Come on, one more time! Every day It's you I live for Every day I follow after you Every day I walk with you, my Lord I live for every day. Come on, sing it. You I live for every day. Is you I live for every day. anybody's going to say and who's going to get so mad at anything you have to say but if we can all come together right here it doesn't matter if we're on music or whatever but I can tell you one thing every day I'm going to worship God with everything I have no matter how hard it is no matter how hard it is come on let's come together come on let's sing this one two one two three every day it's you I live for every day Follow after you every day. I walk with you, my Lord. All together with no music. Every day, it's you I live for. Every day, I follow after you every day. I walk with you, my Lord. Why? 
praise unto the King of glory, unto the Lord of lords. I love you and praise you, Lord God. Every day, it's you that we live for. Every day, you're our life. You're our strength. Lord, we want to live and walk in your spirit every day. Hallelujah. Praise your holy and mighty name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Another day. Another opportunity. Another chance to worship the Lord. To serve the Lord. To live for the Lord and to call upon that wonderful name of Jesus. Aren't you thankful the Lord's given you another day? Praise God. Another day. Hallelujah. This is how you live for the Lord. One day at a time. you got to just every day serve the Lord. Live for God. Trust God to help you. And His Word, He tells us not to worry. And that's easy, easier to say than do. Amen. He says he's going to give you what you need for the day. And so far the Lord has, hasn't he? He's given you what you need. And you've made it through every day. And we need to praise him for that. Thank him right now. Just thank him again. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with us. Praise God. want to bring our needs before you. We're going to just pray right now for the Lord to heal those that are sick. We want to pray for those that need jobs for the Lord to open that door. Amen. And provide the job that is needed. Amen. There are many, many needs. Let's bring them to the Lord. Remember, let's pray for those in Louisiana and all the areas that were affected by the storm. And I want to say thank you to all of you that have given to be a help, to be a blessing. Amen. We want to help and be a blessing. And thank you so much. Lord, we love you and praise you. And I pray, God, your mighty hands of healing and power. I pray, Lord, that your healing, Lord, be upon those that are sick. Lord, I pray for strength in their bodies. I speak healing unto their body from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. We speak it in the name of Jesus. We come against the sickness, disease, infirmities, cancers. We command them to leave and loose their hold. In the name of Jesus, we speak peace upon those that are troubled today. I pray, Lord, for the divine provisions, God, that you would open the door for those that need jobs, that you will provide, that you will make a miraculous, miraculous change in their situation. We know that you are able. We know that you are with us. And we give you praise and glory and honor. I pray, Lord, for all of the families that have suffered from the the storm that came through. That you would give them strength in their bodies. Help them, Lord, to endure. Help them, Lord God, that they will have peace and comfort in their spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Will you put your hand together with me? And let's just praise God. Thank the Lord. Here in our cries. Here in our prayer. Amen. We've got some good news. We have a Bible quizzing coach now. Amen. Brother Matthew. And I'm going to ask him to come. Tonight is kind of the introduction He's going to tell us a little bit about it. And, and I, I, I hope we get some families excited about this. If you've ever had your kids in anything, in this hour that we're living in right now, the soon coming of the Lord, the best thing you can do is want them to get excited about the Word of God. The best thing you can do for your children is get them excited about putting the Word of God into their heart. Amen. Come on, Brother Matthew. God bless you. And thank you, Pastor, for having the opportunity to be able to attempt to start a Quizm program. 
Who in here has heard of Bible quizzing before? I see a couple of hands here. Well, for those who don't know, Bible quizzing is a wonderful ministry where kids learn the Word of God and they study the Word of God. And they take their knowledge and they go to tournaments and they quiz with teams on their knowledge. But one of the great things about quizzing is that it teaches kids so many life skills that they just need. Skills like patience, humility, teamwork, diligence, listening to what they're told. It teaches a lot of really valuable things that kids just need to know. But those kind of lessons can also be learned if they're playing sports. You know, if you're doing baseball or soccer or football or whatever. But where quizzing is different, kids learn the Word of God. And for instance, the Bible says that bodily exercise profiteth little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of that which now is and of that which is to come. And see, a Bible quizzer would know that. I was a Bible quizzer. I learned that verse. You know, there's a lot of other versions, a lot of other things in the Bible that quizzers learn that help them. For instance, you have kids in school, a uh, Pentecostal girl, you know, her classmates are picking on her. Hey, why do you have long hair? I don't know. My pastor told me. That's not, you need to learn the word of God. Because if you've learned the Word of God, you know that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says that if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for recovering. All right, let's take another situation. You're on the job, and you're dealing with a lot of coworkers, and they're using a lot of slang and a lot of curse words and whatnot. And, you know, it's like, hey, I don't do that. Well, why don't you do that? The Bible doesn't say not to curse, right? But if you learn the Word of God, Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. That's something that a Bible quizzer has the opportunity to learn and memorize to their heart. Also, whenever you're dealing with, well, is this a sin or is it not a sin? I don't know. Well, a Bible quizzer would have learned James 4.17 that says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. What else do we have? Uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 21 through 23. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, simulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. These verses and literally hundreds, if not thousands of others, depending on how long a quizzer is invested in the Word of God, these things grow with the quizzer. And these verses that I'm telling you tonight, I might not have thought of these verses in the past 10, 20, 30 days, maybe in the past six months or so, but just a simple thought quickly reminded me of these verses that I have learned. And I tell you, it does wonders for a quizzer to be able to learn these things and hide it in their heart. Now, quizzing is not just a serious matter. It's also a lot of fun. Bible quizzers have the opportunity to be able to go to tournaments on a monthly basis starting in January. And they get to meet a whole lot of other people who are also learning the Word of God. Kids that's their age, and they automatically have a lot of things in common with them because they're learning all these verses and there's neat things about them and neat things about Bible quizzing. Also, when you go to tournaments, you have the opportunity to win ribbons and trophies and medals. And, you know, that can be a lot of exciting for kids. Going to these tournaments, you know, they have a lot of tournaments out in the Austin area, some here in the Houston area. It's, it can be fun for quizzers to be able to go and enjoy those uh, van rides. And then we have weekly quiz practices where we are studying the verses that we've learned and we're working on them. And there's opportunities for kids to be able to earn uh, candy or toys or things like that. There's a lot of fun things involved with Bible quizzing. Uh, but one thing, if you're interested in it, if it sounds like something that you or your kid might want to do, it's an investment. It's something that you're going to have to say, I'm going to be willing to learn a couple verses just about every day. And then I'm also going to have to learn to recite the verses that I've learned just about every day. And then, like I said, there's going to the weekly quiz practices and all that. So it is a little bit of an investment, but I tell you, this small investment is one of the best things that you can do for your kid. And I mean that wholeheartedly. Now, that said, I, uh, I will be posting something on the Facebook page, uh, a little promotional video for those who are interested. Uh, if you've got any short-term questions, you can try to talk to me tonight after service. But I would like to try to have a little bit of a meeting uh, next Sunday. This Sunday is going to be Labor Day, so the following Sunday, which is the 13th, I believe, uh, we'll be trying to have a little meeting for people to really ask questions and see what kind of interest there is in it. 
But I just wanted to share that all with you all, and I hope that we've got some interest in it. Thank you, Pastor. Well, praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about this. Amen. I'm excited about it. I, I, I think that it'd be great to get the parents in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But I, I'm, I'm excited because the Lord sent to our church a replacement. Sister Jennifer, was it Garza? Sister Jennifer Garza. And then she moved away. And then years have gone by and and every time when we go around to our annual business meeting you know i'm going through all of our numbers and stuff in our meeting and it gets to the bible quiz and budget you know and it's just the same thing it's always you know pretty much nothing no activity nothing going on and and then the lord sent the bell family and praise god so when he sent them and I realized that they were coaches and all of that. I said, well, praise God. The Lord's going to fill this need here. So we thank God for that. I want to give you an opportunity to give of your offering and your tithes tonight. Amen. And then after that, we will, you will be dismissed. Those that are in the membership class that will be in room 104, we, you can be dismissed. And then also the youth are going to be back over in their sanctuary. Hallelujah. We're still holding on to them to be over here and, and musicians and all of that for a little longer. And I've been enjoying that on Wednesday night. I like them being over here. Amen. Praise God. Lord, we love you and praise you. Thank you so much for our blessings. We thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord. You've blessed us over and over again. And in obedience, we worship you in giving. In the name of Jesus, we speak your blessing. Amen. God bless you. Come, bring your offering, your tithes, and smile really big. Let everybody know you're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Wave, 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 wave. Everybody wave. Smile, wave. Amen, amen.
Somebody say there's no one like the Lord. No one like the Lord in all the earth. He said, who are you going to compare me to? Amen. Cannot compare the Lord to anyone. Praise God. We serve the King of Kings. And I'm glad I know who he is. Amen. I enjoyed uh, Brother Lewis. Was it Bobby Lewis? Sunday morning the oneness of the Lord I never get tired of that hallelujah and I sure did enjoy the part he brought out about the fire amen wasn't that good hallelujah the only one that gets to see the thighs is the bride hallelujah amen amen so good to have all of you those that are watching live stream thank you so much for joining watching being a part of the service tonight praise God well let's go into the word of the Lord 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 and I'm reading verse 4 and verse 5 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 and verse 5 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God Everybody say, through God. Amen. This is the only way it's going to be done. It's through God. To the pulling down of strong holds. And the casting down imaginations. Everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And brings into captivity every thought. Unto the obedience of of Christ. And I want to talk to you on the subject images in the mind. 
images in the mind. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word. And Lord, get us ready. We know you're coming. We know you're coming soon. Get us ready. Every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Amen. In the reading of the word of the Lord. The Lord has really dealt with me. I'm having some struggling in my ear headphones that I'm wearing. I'm, I'm getting about every other word. and It's kind of bugging me. It's no coincidence that the cross that Jesus was crucified on was placed at a place called Golgotha. It's not just something that just happened to be, and it happened to be the place, you know, where crucifixion happened to be. There was a reason behind that. There was a purpose in everything that it represented and everything that it meant. Because Golgotha means the place of the skull. The place of a skull. It got its name because of this specific location. Y'all heard them, the hill, Calvary's hill, and, and all of this. But this location was a skull-shaped hill in Jerusalem. It had a skull shape to it. It had two sun sunken places that looked like the eyes of a skull. And so, therefore, Golgotha, it was given the, this, this name or this interpretation, the, the, the place of the skull. Mark 15 and 22, and they bring in him, speaking of Jesus, unto the place, Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of of a skull. Why did Jesus choose the place of the skull as that destination of where his blood was going to be shed? Where he was going to breathe his last breath. Where he was going to go through the worst torment that a physical body could face and have to endure this place known as the place of the skull. It's because our greatest battle is in the skull. Your greatest battle, our greatest strongholds, when you read about the strongholds, the greatest strongholds, the places that can become satanic activity and ruled and controlled by the forces of darkness are in the skull. Our greatest hindrances are in the skull. Our greatest battle is in our head. Somebody say amen. The Apostle Paul, he points out that images in the mind or imaginations are where our spiritual enemy's strongholds are. Those hindering strongholds that keep us, that hinder us, that stop us, that holds us, that binds us are images in our skull. Imaginations comes from a phrase, imagine a nation. It is the formation of a mental image and it becomes a kingdom. Imagine a nation. Something that becomes a kingdom and gives birth to rulers. And I, I, I don't want to detour here, but... I can't help but think of the scripture where it says to gird up the loins of your mind. Loins. Why loins? Because that's the birth. Gives birth 
to rulers. It gives birth to rulers of nations, and it's all inside the head. It's inside our mind. These kingdoms, they are made up of things that we think on. Things that we dwell on. Things that we meditate on. Things that we read. Things that we watch. Things that we listen to. It gives birth. Our meditation begins working with it. That's why the psalmist says in Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But here's where his delight is. His delight is in the word of the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, in his word, doth he meditate day and night. He's thinking on it. He's dwelling on it. He's excited about it. He shall be like a tree that is planted by rivers of water. It will bring forth its fruit in his season. His leaves will not wither. And whatever he does is going to prosper. He's going to be productive. He's not going to die. Come on. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. You are familiar with these scriptures, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. There's a reason behind this. There's a purpose behind this. Because there are kingdoms that can be established and rulers that can be established right here. And they will cripple you and they can destroy you and will cause your life to become non-productive and it will cause you to die spiritually. One of the major strategies, and y'all just, y'all, y'all hang with me tonight. One of the, the major strategies of satanic ritual abuse. All right. And you hear me. There's a big deal going on with that right now. I want you to know that. There is a satanic system at work out there. And I'm going to tell you right now, they want to ruin the minds of your children. They want to get into their head. They want to get into their skull. It's going on all around. One of the major strategies of satanic ritual abuse is to use satanic images or perverted images and put them into the mind of a children. How do they do this? By connecting those images to Christian symbols. So anytime they see a Christian symbol, they get a perverted image connected to it. Y'all hear me? It's called satanic ritual abuse. This is, this is their major objective. If they can just get your children, forget you. They, it's the children, they won't. And, and, and get, get this Christianity and every symbol and everything we do connected somewhere to something that is perverted. Pornography. Seductive images are Satan's number one tool of spiritual imprisonment. Hello. Number one tool. Because if you can get that stuff put into the head of a man or somebody, they can't even go to church without that stuff going through their mind. Messes them up. Messes them up. Get those images, or, or if it's not the pornography, then the seductive images connected to everything. 
And this ends up being a tool for spiritual imprisonment. As we are seeing prophecies of the end time being fulfilled at a super rapid pace. The year of 2020 is being a prophetic catapult. You hear me today. I'm saying a prophetic catapult on the end time. There is a very dangerous deceiving movement that has started. It is just the beginning of it. And it is another sign of the end time. It is a quantum leap. Oh, hear me. It is a quantum leap. It is a prelude to the devious things that you read in Revelation. You hear me. I'm going to bring it out right now. And I'm not going to name the name. But I'm going to describe what's happening. It is with a popular pop star female singer that is very well known for being provocative, dressing provocative, the songs are provocative and the dance movements are provocative. And she is becoming a leading symbol or image connected unto a major religious worship called mass. I'm not going to bring it. Afterwards, y'all want to talk? I'll be glad to. But her name is connected with mass. I'm going to read the exact words that describe this movement. I just, I just Googled it, took it off my phone to get more information here. It said this groundbreaking, everybody say groundbreaking. Y'all have had groundbreaking. We've had it right here on this property, groundbreaking. This groundbreaking spiritual experience has gathered thousands of people at worship services from Southern California to Portugal. Mass. Led by a very popular person known as This reminds me of the scriptures in Revelation. Revelation 17 and 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet colored beast. Full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations. And the filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written. Mystery Babylon the great. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw that woman drunken with the blood of the saints. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her I was wondering in this great amazement. Can I tell you who's under attack right now? You are. I am. What we stand for. What we represent. This holiness. This purity. The living for God. All of this is under attack right now in a way you do not understand. The greatness of it. The great measures of what's going on right now. This very moment. And the popularity of building up something that is provocative. That is seductive. That represents pornography and everything else. Being the lead connected with Christian symbols. I'm telling you, you are seeing what's been going on behind the scenes coming now to a major scale. Satanic ritual abuse. Get into the minds of the people and connect every spiritual symbol to something that is seductive. Unto something so they can't think about it without it connecting to this. The only way we're going to overcome these images or these strongholds in the imagination is going to be through the powerful redemptive work of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way. It is through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ on that old rugged cross. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That is the only way we're going to overcome Everything that we need for deliverance is through Calvary. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, the preaching of the cross 
It's to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. It is the power of God. It is the power of God. Whatever you do, preach Christ and Him crucified. Everything you need for deliverance is in the cross. Everything you need for deliverance is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Everything you need for deliverance is sitting there at the place of the skull. Everything that you need for deliverance is on Calvary's hill. The preaching of the cross, it is foolishness to those people that are perishing. But unto us, that we are the ones that are saved. It is the power of God. It is what's going to help us. It is what's going to save us. Come on. Hallelujah. If you've ever clinged to hold of that old rugged cross, friend, you better do it now with everything you got. With everything that is within you. Hallelujah. Because you are standing in an end time hour. And I'm telling you, Satan has given it everything he's got. Now is his hour. It's the prelude to everything building up. And I've been saying it to the coming, the kingdom of the Antichrist. Uh, everything that's happening, everything that is going on. Also, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, to the casting down imaginations. Hallelujah. It's done through God. It's done through God. It's done through the Lord. It's done through the works at Calvary. In the Old Testament, the hindrance to the Hebrews As we all know, one of our favorite stories, David and Goliath. Greatest hindrance to the Hebrews was these large men who were eight feet tall. And some of them was as tall as 13 feet tall. Goliath, the giant that we're familiar with, that David fought, Scripture tells us was nine feet tall. You hear me? They represented strongholds. They represented things that seemed unmovable. That the best weapons that the Hebrews had, they couldn't deal with the Philistine giant. Of course, David, he said, I got one that works. (laughs) Hallelujah. But everybody else wouldn't even deal with him. Nobody. They, they, they were stopped. That was it. They wasn't going forward. They were hiding. They was not going to deal with it. But there come David. The David said, let me have him. I'll do it in the name of the Lord. But those giants, they represented something. They represented something spiritually that, that we're dealing with right now in the New Testament. They represented these mental strongholds. Of course, there they kept the Hebrews from going into the promised land. Strongholds of the imagination. Let's read it in Numbers chapter 13. This was after the 12 spies came back with a great report of the promised land. Numbers 13 and 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses. He said, let's go at once. Let's possess it right now. We're well able to do it. But the men that went up with him said, we're not able to go against these people. They're stronger than we are. And they brought up an evil report, which means a bad report of the land which they had searched the children of Israel, saying the land through which we've gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants. And all the people that we saw were men of great stature. We saw giants, the son of Anna, which come of the giants. And we are in our, in, in our own sight as grasshoppers. Giants in the promise. Between them and the promise, giants that were going to keep them. It impacted their imaginations. It impacted their imagination, their images. It, it, it shut them down. It kept them. Many people did not make it to the promised land because of this. Y'all know the story. When the children of Israel went into the promised land, God took care of it all. He took care of it. But there were many people that never even made it to the promised land because they said there's giants in it and we, they're, they're bigger than us and 
Giants represent these images or imaginations of, in the minds of people. They're, they're these images uh, that are so big and these things that are hindrances to us. Uh, strongholds in our mind. They're giants. And listen to me. You know how they turn into giants? You feed them. You feed them. That's why kids don't understand why we tell them, you know, you can't spend all your time watching all this. And always listening to this and a little bit of time with God. Because whatever you feed gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so they feed these things. Either by things that you see or things that you meditate on. It's feeding. Strongholds are being formed and, and being nurtured and being raised up. Nurturing, now y'all hang with me because there's a whole purpose of where I'm heading and why I've laid this foundation. Nurturing wrongs. Come on, I'm, I'm coming against the strategies of Satan. Satan. Nurturing wrongs, nurturing abuses from people, from your past. Causes giants to get into you. And these images become stumbling blocks are giants between you and your salvation, your promised land, your blessings of the Lord. Look what was said to the children of Israel about those seven tribal nations that dwelt in the promised land for hundreds of years prior to Israel's exodus from Egypt, Numbers 33 and 55. If you do not drive out these inhabitants of the land from before you, then it's going to come to pass that those which you let remain, they're going to become pricks in your eyes. They're going to become thorns in your sides. And they're going to vex you in the land you dwell in. If you don't drive them things out, if you don't get those things out, it's going to affect you. It's going to vex you. It's going to mess your vision up. It's going to cripple you. It's going to cause you to not be able to function. It's going to be thorns inside of you. Notice what he said. Those that you let remain. In other words, it's a choice. You can let them remain or not. It is a choice. We must not allow bad events from our past to rule us control us and hinder our present and our future. I'm preaching to the saints of God. I'm preaching to people. You've gone to church for years and years and years and years and years. We cannot let Satan's strategy work. No, we're not going to let the satanic ritual abuse part do its thing. But if we're not careful, this deception is going to work. You cannot let it control you. You cannot let it rob you of your present life and from your future. Now listen to what I'm going to say. God doesn't transform us by the elimination of our problems. It'd be nice if he did. Really would. 
And you, you know, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Sometimes you'd like to see a lightning bolt come down. Pow! Removed. Done. You know, y'all are grinning because, you, you know, it really. Those people that really, you know, really messed with you. Really, really messed up your life. Really affected you. You'd like to see that. All the ground open up. <laughs> God doesn't transform us by the elimination of our problems. He chose to transform us by the renewing of our minds. Oh, hallelujah. I said, oh, hallelujah. I said, oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There are two opposite mechanisms available for dealing with pain and frustration of abuse, of betrayal from a person in your past. Number one, you can choose anger and vengeance as your mechanism to cope with that pain. But if you do, Bitterness will be the guaranteed result. Count on it. You're going to have it in that prison. And I'm going to tell you about bitterness. Because, okay, well, we can live with that, right? We just, we can live with it. Hey, we just live with it. Okay, if you want to live with it, Hebrews 12 and 15. Look diligently. Be very careful. Lest a man fall of the grace of God. That's the root of bitterness springs up in troubles and thereby many are defiled. Be careful. If you decide that's the way you're going to live with it. If you decide it's going to be a life of anger and a life of vengeance. then the guaranteed result is bitterness. And if you have this bitterness, be real careful because you fail or fall from the grace of God. If bitterness is the guaranteed result and you are ensnared by those images in your mind of what they've done to you and you keep nourishing them and you keep feeding them and you keep meditating on them and you keep... It will cause you to fall from the grace of God. So the Lord made a way. You can choose option two. You can choose the way of the cross. Choose the way of power. Choose the way of God. Choose the way that really works against the powers of darkness and the strongholds out of the pits of hell. Choose the way of the cross and forgiveness. If forgiveness is the way you choose, if forgiveness is what you're going to add to the pain, then healing is a guaranteed result. It's a guaranteed result. You're going to be healed. You're going to be healed. You are going to be healed. That's the guaranteed result of the way of the cross, of the way of forgiveness. You are going to be healed. Healing comes by the cross. Healing comes by the way of the cross. Healing comes by actively choosing to give up your desire to seek revenge or to impose and carry out a sentence against the guilty. It requires giving up the right 
to impose justice. That means you got to get off of the judgment stool. Hello. Forgiveness. It involves canceling a debt. Matthew 18 and 32, Jesus said, Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave you of all of your debt, because you have desired me to do. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on your fellow servant, even as I have had pity on you? I have released you from your debt. Every wrong. Every sin. There was a man by the name of Floyd. He was shot in the head during an attempted robbery of his drugstore. He survived and Although a bullet destroyed his sight in one of his eyes, and it remained lodged in his brain, messed him up. Messed him up for life. The man that did it was later arrested, convicted, sentenced to the state prison. This guy that was affected, he could have focused on how this incident had cost him half of his sight and considerable pain for the rest of his life and the financial losses that crippled him through the years of his life. But instead, he chose to correspond with that man in prison, express his desire to see him get his life turned around, And the day that he was paroled, the man was there to meet him face to face. And to show love to him. What a testimony. Here's a man that was left for dead. I mean, the guy left him for dead. Yet God placed in his heart the ability to love and to forgive even though he lived the rest of his life in a constant reminder of this traumatic event. Forgiveness is an act of will, not a result of feelings. It's something you choose. It's, it's a journey you choose to travel. It's a path you choose to go. I'm going to go by the way of Calvary. I'm going to go by the way of the cross. Forgiveness is a choice. Vengeance says, somebody's got to pay. Right? I wish, you know, I could get some of y'all up here just to act out your anger sometime. You, you know. Somebody's got to pay. Somebody's got to pay. That's what vengeance is. Somebody's got to pay. Forgiveness says the price has been paid. Oh, y'all not getting it. Come on. Come on, I'm a human being like every single person in this room. I have suffered hurts and pains and wounds and scars. And I'm telling you all of my life, living for God, serving God, pastoring, you name it. The stuff, the things... But I choose Calvary. I choose the cross. I choose the way of the Lord. I choose to travel to that old rugged cross on Calvary's hill. That place where healing's got to be inside the skull. 
Hallelujah. I'm preaching somebody today. Come on. The major ingredient of being able to forgive is you've got to be able to satisfy the main requirement and that somebody's got to pay. Somebody's got to pay. Somebody's got to pay. Somebody, I've got to have, I've got to have, I've got to have flesh out of this. Somebody's got to pay. The human tendency, the human tendency wants assurance. That there is a sacrifice. Somebody's going to pay. Somebody's going to pay. And it's going to be committed. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Somebody did pay. My God. I said somebody did pay. That's why Jesus Christ went to that place called Golgotha and laid down his life on the cross. He paid the price so you can be free. He paid the price so I can be free. He paid the price so every human being could be free from every stronghold that Satan begins building in the minds of people. In the place of need of payment, you need to let the death of Jesus Christ be enough. I said, you do not put yourself above God. You let that be enough. Do not put yourself above God. Let that be enough. The price that was paid, the blood that was shed was enough. It was enough. It was enough for God. It was enough. Oh my God. Come on, somebody. Help me out for a minute. We got to help somebody. We got to help somebody out of the prison. We got to help somebody be healed. We got to help somebody by the way of the cross. It's enough. Through the mighty works of God. We can pull down the strongholds through the mighty works of God. We can pull them down. Hallelujah. Put the cross in the skull and cast down those images in the mind. Cast down those imaginations. Hallelujah. If you are having difficulty resolving anger about past hurts, Dump that load of anger and that revenge on the thorn-scarred head of Jesus Christ. He said, cast it all on me. Cast it all on me. Come on. If, if you can do anything right now, the best thing you can do is you start using your imagination and you start traveling to the cross. And you start taking that junk and casting that upon those nail scarred, come on, upon that thorn scarred head, vent your pent up wrath in the direction of that wooden instrument of death that was planted on Golgotha over 2,000 years ago. Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. I'm going to say it again, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Come on, that healing, that healing, that healing, that healing, that healing is for everybody. That healing, that healing. Hallelujah. It was this, what happened at Calvary. What God said is going to be enough is enough. What he said is enough for you and enough for me. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. Everything is in that work that happened at Calvary's hill. The substitutionary atonement of Jesus Christ is enough through the blood of Jesus Christ you can break the strongholds through the blood you can break through the bondage of bitterness come on 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. This is a spiritual moment right here like you've never had before. I'm telling you right now. I'm asking you. I'm begging you. Hallelujah. You've got to be ready. The Lord's coming. You've got to be ready. The Lord's coming. You've got to be ready. The Lord's coming. Saints of God. Yeah, you said I've been in church for 50 years. But I'm telling you, there are strongholds that are keeping you bound. You're a prisoner. And those are ruling you. And they're keeping you from the promises of God. It'll cause you to fall from the grace of the Almighty God. You've got to break through. You've got to break through. You've got to break through. That bondage of bitterness has got to finally leave your life. It's got to leave your skull. It's got to leave your spirit. Hallelujah. That you may live in the power of God. In the power of God. Not by the way of the flesh. Not by the best you can do. Not by the strength you've got. You've got to do it. You've got to do it by the way of the cross. Isaiah 53 and 10. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It pleased God. I know your mind has trouble with this. But it pleased God that Christ was crushed, put to grief. Because God is just. And sin had to be punished. And it satisfied God that the penalty for sin was paid. And it cost him everything. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The ultimate price for an offense was paid by Jesus Christ. The one that was least likely in all of the world to deserve it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Don't let something be in you that wants to rise up above God. If that was enough for him... It should be enough for you. If that was enough for him, it should be enough for you. The punishment for wrongdoing, it was handed down by the ultimate judge, the Almighty God. Supreme judgment on sin and the world had found satisfaction in the fact that Christ's blood had been spilled. If we have a musician. Just as God found pleasure in the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ, through the power God gives you, So can you. I'm asking everybody. Say I will. Say. I will. I will. I will. Yes, transgressions occurred, but the price has been paid. The price has been paid. Now you can be released from the stronghold of seeking revenge. To forgive is not to forget. Y'all know that. To forgive is not to forget. You don't forget. You don't forget that beautiful flower that you see. You don't forget things in in life that, that have impact upon you. To forgive is to quit dwelling 
on the offense. Quit nurturing that wrong. To hang on to a memory without forgiveness is to nurture resentment and allow that hurt to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. If forgiveness has occurred, then the recall is much different. It says, I know what happened. It was a very real part of my life and an experience I went through, but it's over. It's over. It's over. It no longer has an emotional devastation for me. I'm not going to be hindered in the present and in my future by what happened in my past. Hallelujah. Oh yes, the fact it really remains, it's there. But through Christ Jesus. Come on, children of God. Sons of God. Sons of God. Hallelujah. Through Christ Jesus, I choose not to let that memory control me any longer. Hallelujah. The price has been paid already. It was good enough for God and it's good enough for me. I cast all of my cares on Jesus. I cast all of my things on that cross. Hallelujah. And I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. I can. I can. I can. You can. We can. Come on. We're going to make it. We are going to make it, Brother Benny. Sister Cass, we're going to make it. Brother Joel, we're going to make it. We're going to do it, Sister Jennifer. We're going to make it. We've all suffered. We've all been hurt. We've all got past. We've all been abused. We've all got things that, I'm telling you, it turns your world up down and it affects you all the days of your life you never forget it you never forget it you never forget it you never forget it hallelujah but Jesus said I'm gonna make a way I'm gonna make a way I'm not gonna send a lightning bolt out of heaven and blow our socks off of them I'm gonna make a way for every human being that has done anything including the ones that's driving the nails into my feet driving the nails into my hand putting the spear into my side putting the crown of thorns into my head putting me through the worst torment this human flesh could ever face I forgive you the price has been paid be free be free be free by the blood of Jesus Christ be free be free be free come on it was enough for God it was enough for God let it be enough for you let it be enough for you come on lift up your hand begin to worship the Lord just say yes Lord I will come on cast all your cares there come on put all your load there all the things come on you got to release that person that debt has been paid quit waiting for the debt to be paid the debt's been paid the debt's been paid the debt's been paid Hallelujah. Come on, everybody help me. Everybody help me. Pray. Pray. There's got to be a miracle deliverance. It's not by the way of carnality. It's not by the carnal means of warfare. It's by the way of Jesus Christ. It's by the way of the cross. It's got to be by the power of God. You've got to pull down those strongholds. You gotta pull down, you gotta cast down those 
those images. You got to cast it down. You got to do it in the power of God. You got to do it by the way of the cross. You got to do it by the way of Calvary. Come on. It's got to happen in the skull. It's got to happen in the skull. The blood, the redemption, the power, everything. It's got to happen by the way of the cross in the skull. Come on, I speak healing to you. I speak healing to you. By his stripes you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. You don't have to fall from the grace of God. Come on. You don't have to fall from the grace of God. Cast down those imaginations. Every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. That would cause itself to rise up above God. Come on. The Calvary's got to be enough. It's got to be enough. It's got to be enough got to be enough. Hallelujah. 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 Whatever you have. When I wander through the desert Jesus. and I'm longing for my home, the all name my dreams have gone astray. In the name of Jesus. When I'm stranded in the valley, Heal and I'm us, tired and all alone. Heal us, Seems God. like I've lost my Heal way. us, God. Heal the mind. I go running Heal to the mind. your mountain. Drive out the strong man. 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 You've got to be ready. You've got to be ready for the covenant of the Lord. You've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank y'all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you can take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.